Chaudhry Remat Ali, Urdu, Chaudhry Remti Li, the 16th of November 1897 to the 3rd of February 1951, was a Pakistani nationalist who was one of the earliest proponents of the creation of the state of Pakistan. He is credited with creating the name Pakistan for a separate Muslim homeland in South Asia and is generally known as the founder of the Pakistan movement and for its creation. He is best known as the author of a famous 1933 pamphlet titled. Now or never, are we to live or perish forever? Also known as the Pakistan Declaration. The pamphlet started with a famous statement At this solemn hour in the history of India, when British and Indian statesmen are laying the foundations of a federal constitution for that land, we address this appeal to you, in the name of our common heritage, on behalf of our 30 million Muslim brethren who live in Pakistan, used as an acronym. Education and career Ali was born in November 1897 into a Gujar Muslim family of the Gorsi clan in the town of Balashore in the Hoshiarpur district of Punjab, Punjab, British India. After graduating from Islamia Madrasa Lahore in 1918, he taught at Acheson College Lahore before joining Punjab University to study law. However, in 1930 he moved to England to join Emmanuel College Cambridge, in 1931. Subsequently, he obtained a BA degree in 1933 and MA in 1940 from the University of Cambridge. In 1933, he published a pamphlet, Now or Never, coining the word Pakistan for the first time. In 1943, he was called to the bar, from Middle Temple, London. Ramit Ali finished education in England, obtaining MA and LLB with honours from the Universities of Cambridge and Dublin. In 1946, he founded Pakistan National Movement in England. Until 1947, he continued publishing various booklets about his vision for South Asia. The final partition of India disillusioned him due to the mass killings and mass migrations it ended up producing. He was also dissatisfied with the distribution of areas among the two countries and considered it a major reason for the disturbances. Philosophy Ali believed that the Muslims of India had to reform politically to become a viable, independent community. He was inspired by Islamic history, he believed that Indian Muslims should similarly unite to survive in what he perceived to be an increasingly hostile India. As such, Ali's writings, in addition to those of Muhammad Iqbal and others were major catalysts for the formation of Pakistan. He offered the name, Charsistan, for a Muslim homeland in the Bengal region, and Nawazistan, for a Muslim homeland in the Deccan. He also suggested Danian as a name for a South Asia of various religions. Ali is known for his steadfast dedication to the idea of Pakistan. After its formation in 1947, he argued on its behalf at the United Nations over the issue of Kashmir and the rights of Muslim minority of India. Topic: Conception of Pakistan. In 1932, Ali moved to a now famous house in Cambridge, on 3 Humberstone Road. It was in one of the rooms of this house that he is said to have written the word Pakistan for the first time. There are several accounts of the creation of the name. According to a friend, Abdul Karim Jabbar, the name came up when Ali was walking along the banks of the Thames in 1932 with his friends Pir Asan Ud Din and Khwaja Abdul Rahim. According to Ali's secretary Miss Frost, he came up with the idea while riding on the top of a London bus. On 28 January 1933, Ali voiced the idea in a pamphlet titled, Now or Never, Are We to Live or Perish Forever? The word Pakistan referred to the five northern units of India, viz., Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province, Afghan Province, Kashmir, Sindh, and Baluchistan. By the end of 1933, Pakistan had become common vocabulary, and an I was added to ease pronunciation as in Afghan I stand. In a subsequent book, Ali discussed the etymology in further detail. Pakistan is both a Persian and an Urdu word. It is composed of letters taken from the names of all our South Asia homelands, that is, Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh and Baluchistan. It means the land of the Paks, the spiritually pure and clean. Ali's biographer, K. K. Aziz, writes that, 
Ramit Ali alone drafted this declaration in which the word Pakistan was used for the first time, but in order to make it representative. He began to look around for people who would sign it along with him. This search did not prove easy. For so firm was the grip of Muslim Indian nationalism on our young intellectuals at English universities that it took me Ramit Ali more than a month to find three young men in London who offered to support and sign it. Later on, his political opponents used the name of these signatories and other friends of Ali, as creator of word Pakistan. <laughs> Iqbal and Jinnah On 29 December 1930, Muhammad Iqbal delivered his monumental address. He said, I would like to see the Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province, Sindh and Baluchistan amalgamated into a single state. Self-government within the British Empire, or without the British Empire, the formation of a consolidated Northwest Indian Muslim state appears to me to be the final destiny of the Muslims, at least of Northwest India. According to some scholars, that Iqbal had not presented the idea of an autonomous Muslim state, rather he wanted a large Muslim province by amalgamating Punjab, Sindh, NWFP and Baluchistan into a big northwestern province within India. They argued that Iqbal never pleaded for any kind of partition of the country. Rather he was an ardent proponent of a true federal setup for India and wanted a consolidated Muslim majority within the Indian Federation." Another Indian historian, Tara Chand, also held that Iqbal was not thinking in terms of partition of India but in terms of a federation of autonomous states within India. Dr. Safdar Mahmood also asserted that in an Allahabad address Iqbal proposed a Muslim-majority province within the Indian Federation and not an independent state outside the Indian Federation. On 28 January 1933, Chaudhry Ramit Ali voiced his ideas in the pamphlet titled, Now or Never, Are We to Live or Perish Forever? The word Pakistan referred to the five northern units of India, viz., Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province, Afghan Province, Kashmir, Sindh, and Baluchistan. By the end of 1933, the word Pakistan became common vocabulary where an I was added to ease pronunciation as in Afghan I stan. In a subsequent book Remat Ali discussed the etymology in further detail. Pakistan is both a Persian and an Urdu word. It is composed of letters taken from the names of all our South Asia homelands, that is, Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh and Baluchistan. It means the land of the pure. The British and the Indian press vehemently criticised these two different schemes and created a confusion about the authorship of the word, Pakistan, to such an extent that even Jawaharlal Nehru had to write. Quote, quote, Iqbal was one of the early advocates of Pakistan and yet he appears to have realised its inherent danger and absurdity. Edward Thompson has written that in the course of conversation, Iqbal told him that he had advocated Pakistan because of his position as president of Muslim League session, but he felt sure that it would be injurious to India as a whole and to Muslims especially. In 1934, Chaudhry Ramit Ali and his friends met Muhammad Ali Jinnah and appealed for his support of the Pakistan idea. He replied, My dear boys, don't be in a hurry, let the waters flow and they will find their own level. 25. After the creation of Pakistan While Chaudhry Ramit Ali was a leading figure for the conception of Pakistan, he lived most of his adult life in England. He had been voicing his dissatisfaction with the creation of Pakistan ever since his arrival in Lahore on 6 April 1948. He was unhappy over a smaller Pakistan than the one he had conceived in his 1933 pamphlet, Now or Never. After the creation of Pakistan he returned to Pakistan in April 1948, planning to stay in this country, but he left again over disputes. He died on 3 February 1951 in Cambridge. Fearing correctly that he may have died insolvent, the master of Emanuel College, Cambridge, Edward Wellborn, instructed that the college would cover the funeral expenses. He was buried on 20 February at Cambridge City Cemetery in Cambridge, England. 
The funeral expenses and other medical expenses were repaid by the High Commissioner for Pakistan in November 1953, after what was described as protracted correspondence between the London office and relevant authorities in Pakistan. Works Now or Never, Are We to Live or Perish Forever? also known as the Pakistan Declaration, 1933. What Does the Pakistan National Movement Stand for? Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1933. Letters to the Members of the British Parliament, Cambridge, 8 July 1935. Islamic Fatherland and the Indian Federation, The Fight Will Go On for Pakistan Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1935 Letter to the Times, 8 December 1938 The Malat of Islam and the Menace of Indianism Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1942 The Malat and the Mission, Seven Commandments of Destiny for the Seventh Continent of Dinia Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1942 the Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Faroukistan for the Muslims of Bihar and Orissa Cambridge, The Faroukistan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Hateristan for Muslims of Hindustan Cambridge, The Hateristan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Maplistan for Muslims of South India Cambridge, The Maplistan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Muinistan for Muslims of Rajasthan Cambridge, The Muinistan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Siddiquistan for Muslims of Central India Cambridge, The Siddiquistan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Sufistan for Muslims of Western Ceylon Cambridge, The Sufistan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Minorities, Foundation of Nazaristan for Muslims of Eastern Ceylon Cambridge, The Nazaristan National Movement, 1943. The Malat and Her Ten Nations, Foundation of the al Dinia Mili Movement Cambridge, The al Dinia Mili Movement, 1944. Dinia, The Seventh Continent of the World Cambridge, Dinia Continental Movement, 1946. India, the continent of Dinia, or the country of doom Cambridge, Dinia Continental Movement, 1946. The Pakistan National Movement and the British Verdict on India Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1946. Pakasia, the historic orbit of the Pak culture Cambridge, the Pakasia Cultural Movement, 1946. Osmanistan, the fatherland of the Osman Nation Cambridge, the Osmanistan National Movement, 1946. The Greatest Betrayal, How to Redeem the Malat, Cambridge, Pakistan National Movement, 1947 Pakistan, The Fatherland of the Pak Nation, Cambridge, Pakistan National Liberation Movement, 1947 The Muslim Minority in India and the Saving Duty of the UNO, Cambridge, The Al Dinia Mili Liberation Movement, 1948 the Muslim Minority in India and the Dinian Mission to the UNO Cambridge, the al Dinia Mili Liberation Movement, 1949 Pakistan or Pastan? Destiny or Disintegration, Cambridge, the Pakistan National Liberation Movement, 1950 Complete works of Ramit Ali, ed. Kurshid Kamal Aziz Islamabad, National Commission on Historical and Cultural Research, 1978 See also Pakistan Movement Indian Independence Movement Indian Muslim Nationalism Pakistani Nationalism All India Muslim League Muslim League Pakistan Punjab Muslim League Pakistan Declaration Osmanistan <laughs>